In this video for Math 94, we'll be talking about problems from homework number one, which covers section 4.4 and 4.5 in your book. These problems are like number one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and it talks about the concept of similarity. To get us started on the concept of similarity, I'd like to review some ideas about similarity. If you've ever used a Xerox machine to enlarge or shrink a copy, you've used the concept of similar figures. For example, here's two similar, similar figures. I use my Xerox machine to make this one one and a half times larger than that one. Now let's think about what that means. If this were four here, since this is one and a half times larger, this would have to be four times one and a half, which gives me six. If this, for example, were, say, six, this would be, have to be one and a half times larger and give me nine. So this idea that these increase by the same scale factor is important with similarity. Here's another example of two similar figures I made. And again, notice that the sides have to be in proportion there. So if this were 8, and let's say this one was twice as large, then this would have to be 8 times 2, or 16. And if this here is, say, 5, then this would be, have to be twice as large and be 5 times 2 is 10. So this scale factor is important. The other thing to notice is that this angle and this angle need to be the same. So in fact do all of them. It would be impossible for any of these angles to change if you have similar figures. So what is distinctive about two figures if they are similar? Two figures are similar if the ratios of the corresponding parts of the figures are equal, and if the corresponding angles are equal. If you have a triangle, then you could say two triangles are similar if either their corresponding angles are equal or their corresponding sides are proportional. Now, let's look at some examples here to kind of give us an idea. So here is a set of triangles, and I'd like to determine if the triangles are similar. Well, if you look at these two triangles, you can see that 11 and 13, or 33, excuse me, are corresponding parts, and 4 and 12 are corresponding parts. Now, if you take a ratio of 33 over 11, that equals 3, and 12 over 4, that also equals 3. Since the ratio of the corresponding parts are equal, these two triangles are similar. Sometimes we um, have problems where we don't have triangles, so we have to be a little careful. For example, here's a problem from WebAssign, those 3D figures here, too. And let's take a look at this. It says, here we have a cylinder with a radius of 8 and a height of 10, and here we have another cylinder with a radius of 12 and a height of 15. Give the ratios of the given radii heights H, E, N, to R, A, T. Okay, so H, E, N is right here. So if we look at the ratio of the radii, the radius here is 8, okay, and the ra radius here is 12. Of course, we could reduce that fraction to two-thirds. And on this one, when we look at the heights, the ratio here is 10, and the ratio here is 15. And again, we could reduce that factor to two-thirds. Since these ratio of corresponding parts are the same, that means the triangles are similar. And now it says, name two corresponding pairs of line figure segments if the similars, the um, figures are similar. And certainly, NE and AT are similar. NE and AR are not corresponding parts. EH and AR are corresponding parts. Okay, EH and AT are not. And of course, 
the figures are similar. So that's just a little idea about similarity. Now, why do we care? Um, well, one reason we care is we can often find missing parts if triangles are similar. For example, here are two triangles, and we're saying these triangles are similar. That means we're assuming there is a scale factor that takes x to 12 and 15 to 20 and h to 32. So our question is, how do we find h and x? So I'm going to set up a ratio of corresponding parts. So here I have x over 12. Those are corresponding parts. And I have 15 over 20. Now, if these triangles are similar, this ratio of corresponding parts has to be equal. Now, to make my life a little simpler, I'm going to simplify this fraction, divide the top and bottom by 5. And now I'm going to cross multiply and get 4x equals 36, or x equals 9. So x is 9. Now, for finding h, see if you can find h. You might want to pause the video right now, and then come back in a moment when you have determined the value for h. What I did to find h is I used h over 32. Those are corresponding parts. And I used my 15 and 20 again as corresponding parts. And so I took 15 over 20. And I decided, well, I'm going to reduce that again to 3 quarters. Cross multiplying gives me 4h equals 3 times 32. If you divide both sides by 4, you should get 24. So that is one way you can use similar triangles to help you figure out um, some of these problems. Now, let's take a look at a problem from WebAssign. You might want to take a moment and look at these. You'll notice these two triangles have two angles indicated as being equal. So I know these are similar. Because these are similar, I can use a ratio of corresponding sides. I could use 61 over n and 46 over 23. Now, again, let's be a little careful. 46 over 23 is 2 over 1, so that will make my life a little bit easier. And cross multiplying, I get 2n equals 61. So n equals 61 over 2, which is 30 and a half or 30.5. Okay. See if you can do this one, this also being from WebAssign. Start the video again when you have an answer. So n over 12 equals 12 over 6 would be one way to do this. I'm sorry, n over 24. n over 24 equals 12 over 6 is 2 over 1. So that is n equals 48. Okay, and that looks pretty clear. This is a scale factor of 2, so I would double that side right there. Now, what are some other things we can do with similar figures? Well, we can solve some more complicated problems. Take a look at this one. Here, we looks like we don't have two figures, but you can separate these. Let me draw these angles in here. And I call this A, B, C, D, and E. I can separate these two triangles like this. And then my big triangle here, like this. And I'm also just going to put in what I know. I know this is 3. I know this is 5. I know this distance is 14, but what is this distance here? Well, if this is 14 and this is x, then this distance here is 14 minus x. How do I know these triangles are similar? Well, they both have a right angle, so they have that in common, and they both share angle A. So they clearly have two angles equal in each triangle. And you can set up the following ratio, 3 over 5, equals 14 minus x over 14. Now, I'll let you solve that problem on your own. Just cross multiply and simplify it. Now, here's another problem 
where we might use some word problems to help me deal with similarity. If a tree casts a 34-foot shadow along the ground, while a 5-foot, five 5-foot five person casts a 3-foot long shadow, how tall is the tree? So, here's my tree. Not much of an artist, okay, so there's my tree. And this tree is casting a shadow on the ground. We can assume our tree is straight up. The sun is up here, so it's helping cast this shadow down here. And we know this shadow is 34 feet. I don't know how high the tree is. A 5-foot five foot five, five person casts a shadow at the same time, okay, where the same sun is, okay, same height. They cast a shadow that's 3 feet tall. So, once again, we can see similar triangles. Certainly, if it's taken at the same time, this angle of the height of the sun is the same. So we could do x over 5.5 equals 34 over 3. That gives you 3x equals 34 times 5.5. Take out your calculators and take a moment to try and do that. 34 times 5.5 is 187. Divide 187 by 3 and you get 62 and a third. Okay, or you could just leave that as 187 over 3, and that should be okay also. So that gives you an idea about, and that of course is in feet there to do that. Now, here's another example of one that might be kind of interesting to do. A six foot tall person has an eight foot shadow formed by a street light. So imagine you have a street light here, okay? And here's a six foot tall person. And they're standing straight up and they have an eight foot shadow. The person is standing 12 feet from the street light. How high is the street light? Do you see the two similar triangles in here? This small one here, if I say that's ABC, and this tall one here, a S for street light and E down here. These two triangles are similar. They share angle A and assuming the street light and the person are standing straight up and down, these are 90 degree angles. So if you look at that, you can see six goes over X. Those are corresponding parts. And then eight over the total. But how much is this total here? That total there is 20. So you could reduce this again. Thirty equals two x. So x is fifteen. So that is a fifteen foot feet tall street light there. Now, just to end our discussion of similarity, let's see if we can do a few application problems that might be stuff that you might see um, later. So take a look at this one. I'd like to find x. So notice the two similar triangles. Similar triangles are right here. 6, this one with a base of 6. This one with a base of x. Now, a little hidden in here is the idea that the height of this tall one is 15. And the height of this small one here, hmm, what would that be? Well, 15 minus 5, that gives me a height of 10. So again, the corresponding parts don't have to just be sides. They can be altitudes, too. So here I have 10 over 15 equals 6 over x. Again, you can reduce this by 2 thirds equals 6 over x. And 2x equals 18, so x equals 9. So this value of x here would be 9. Let's do um, one more problem I'd like you to try. See if you can do this on your own. I'd like you to use proportions to find x. You might want to pause the video and then restart it when you are ready. Okay, I have two triangles here. I have a big one and I have a not so big one. Not so big one, I'm going to call this 2. And this, of course, is 3, the large one. These two angles are indicated to be equal. 
and these two are indicated to be equal. In the large triangle, this is 12. How long is this? Well, this is 12 and this is x, so this has to be 12 minus x. Set that up. I could do 3 over 2 as corresponding parts equals 12 over 12 minus x. So if I solve this little equation, I get that x equals 4. I hope you have found this video useful.